For students uh, in universities and colleges is two to three seconds. They give professors two to three seconds and then they go, you know, I'm out of here. So that's really important. It means that your opening sets context and actually either invites in the attention or not. 18 minutes is the amount of time that the average adult has to absorb content. And there's uh, a lot of research on the first eight seconds, and it's always eight seconds. There's debate about that. The, whoever does the research, it could be anywhere from five to 10 to 12. 18 minutes is like the longest. So that's more important for like a longer, larger meeting. It wouldn't really happen on the phone so much. But if any of you were going to a client's office or whatever or giving a presentation, you want to break the material up and give them a break after 18 minutes or less. Uh, so, and then here is the audience attention and retention curve. So here's where you stop, start speaking, the beginning. Here's the end. It looks a little bit like a uterus. But mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, sorry, sorry. Dan. Right, I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> but like little fallopian tubes over here. Um, and this is the middle where the most of the meat is of your, what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. It's really hard to see the curve. Um, so people are paying attention at the beginning because they want to decide if you know this is going to be worth it, and they're paying attention at the end because, as you know, and you this will happen to you today with me. When you hear someone wrapping up, you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So, and in the middle, where like all your important stuff is, is when they go on mental vacation. So that's like an important thing too. You want to create communication. You have to be realistic that people will go down here. They're going to dip out on you. But you want to create spikes. You want to like create ways to bring back attention, especially if you're having a long meeting or a conversation over the phone. So you want to think about that. And then ultimately, audiences especially yours, right? Your clients are almost out of money because they've either spent some of it with Greenleaf or what was that book? What was that one you told me? Book in a Box. Book in a Box. Mm -hmm. um, or whatever. The, the social media person perhaps. Social right media person. Their um, website developer. Book site <laughs> developer. They're spending money right and left. And so if this, is urgent what's in it for me mm -hmm. so everyone you're talking to on the phone is like what do you got for me I don't care about you I'm spending money that I don't have I'm down to this much what do you got what's in it for me what is new useful valuable beneficial give me something We've been through audience, we've been through focal point. The next thing is big, but we're going to play another game. All right, I'm going to tap out a song on the table with my pen. I'm the tapper, you guys are the listeners, and you have to guess the song. Ready? Happy birthday. You sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on second thought, no, because you asked me if I was sure. Star Spangled Banner. Uh -huh. So, why did we play Tappers and Listeners? I think it's in the book, right? I don't remember. <laughs> if I don't remember, you definitely don't remember. Because the tapper is the communicator. The listener is the audience. If you, what's that? I was amazed by that. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, they sound alike, so that's not a not an uncommon, um, you know, 
pile okay, of quicksand. Okay, how many people here are tap, uh, singing in their head the songs? I yeah, I am right now. Well, and um, <laughs> once Mike said that, that, you were all hearing Happy mm -hmm. Birthday. Yeah. 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 The yeah. power of suggestion. Oh, right? yeah. 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 It's Mike saying it's the second time. It's like, it's Mike, I'm sure are. there are other things are. here that are Most things are Mike's fault. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the, the, this is an issue. This is exactly what goes wrong in communication, and especially over the phone, is we just start tapping. And there's no context, there's no, you know, the, you're not helping or packaging what you're giving to the person, whether it's in writing or on the phone, or you're standing up and giving a speech, it's the meetings and presentations and speeches you attend where you leave the room and you go, well, that was sort of interesting, but I'm not really sure what that was about. Those, you've just heard a tapper. Mm -hmm. Or you hang up the phone and you're like, that was the weirdest phone call. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do now. You were on the phone with a tapper. <coughs> so, all communication requires packaging. And it's actually a pleasure to talk to you guys about this because you are professional communicators, right? You're like always packaging for other people, but the question for you is are you packaging for yourselves too? So, another bad art drawing from like, you know, this is me, second, I'm still at the second grade level for drawing. Don't tell me you see Pepperidge Farm, but what do you see? <laughs> fish. 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 You see... One happy fish. One big happy fish. And you see, you know, like a school of little ones, right? Mm -hmm. This represents everything about how people communicate. Okay? The little fish is information. Detail, data, background, statistics, just info, right? This is, and I can use this term with you, it's so <laughs> happy, a message, <laughs> okay? A message, a substantial <coughs> statement that bears meaning, has weight, right? So the problem, and this happens especially in these monthly calls, and it probably happens with when you're pitching to the media, is that, and, and basically what I'm giving you is the hierarchy of how we communicate. You, you either lead with all the little fish or you deliver only little fish, assuming that they will arrive at the big fish on their own. People do not do that work. We've established that. And no audience is willing to sit and like, sort through and figure. So are you telling me that, eh? Right? That's the question that suggests you haven't given packaged inside of a big fish. Little fish have no place in this world without a big fish. And I'm going to move over back to the focal point. The focal point is overarching. It's in this conversation, here's what I would like you to take away, or here's what I would like you to do afterwards. It's overarching. It's the large goal of the conversation. The big fish captures the significance or substance of all the little fish. And you want to share the big fish. And this is where the hard work comes in. This is where you actually have to think. And do the, <laughs> bummer, right? <laughs> you actually have to think, OK, I want to share all of this. What can I say that gives it some weight and importance and is memorable, that they can retain? that they could maybe repeat if they had to. Nobody can repeat all the little fish. It's not memorable, unless there's one in there that's like really cool or you know unusual, like Harvard Business Review or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> for those big egoed authors. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, every series of little fish needs a big fish. So maybe, and this can apply in writing, this is in phone conversations, this is especially in pitches. They do not have the patience for little fish, right? So this gives you a way to communicate modularly. Okay, what is the point or the significance of all these little fish that I need to share with the reporter or that I need to give to the client? That's your big fish. You open with that. 
and the modular part comes in like if you think you have their attention or they have the capacity for it you can offer a couple of little fish if they have zero attention and you know this is going to be you have to be so brief you introduce with a big fish and you say for example and you offer one little fish if they're interested maybe you can sneak in another one but if not you move on to the next big fish so this is like how you and so you open with the big fish give as many or as few little fish as they have the tolerance for and then you summarize oops that's the big guy with the big fish again because you're trying to leave, in every call with a reporter or a client, you're trying to leave an impression. You're trying to plant something. And so the work for you is, okay, given all this stuff we know about this happiness book, what is it that is, you know, so this is like your hook kind of stuff. It's thinking through that. And the one thing I will say about the reports and the calls is, you, my experience was it was largely little fish. So, you know, it could be broken up into this would be a section of material that you're sharing. It could be broken up into um, local media, trade media, national big hit media, and you'd have a big fish for each one, and several little fish. So, and that's how people, because that's how people remember. So remember the spikes in the attention span thing? Big fish are the spikes. They bring people's attention back. Gives them something memorable and retainable and repeatable to go to. Okay. Ma grand-mère est ta grand-mère, nos pieds.